Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be doing a very exciting video because in this video I'm going to be doing if you didn't like this book then I highly recommend checking out this movie or TV show. Because if you didn't know, I'm a huge lover of books as well as movies and TV shows and I probably watch a decent amount of movies and TV shows in comparison to how many books I read. I just consume a lot of different things. And in the past, I've done videos kind of like this where I do like, if you like this book, check out this movie or TV show or I've even done, you know, if you like this book, check out this other book or if you didn't like this book, then you might like this book. But I've never done a version like this before where I say if you didn't like this book, then I think you might like this TV show or movie that has a similar concept that maybe does it better in a different media format. You know, because as much as I love books, I am totally aware of the fact that some stories just work better in movie or TV show format. And that's not necessarily going to be the opinion of every single person out there, but I definitely think there are some stories that just translate better on film or TV. And these are some books that not only do I think these books would probably translate better to being on TV or movie, like the actual story in the books themselves, but also these are some books that reminded me of other TV shows or movies that have done this story a lot better through that format. So I thought I would recommend you some today. However, before we do jump into the video today, I wanted to say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, which is Skillshare, because Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. Invest in yourself and your personal growth. Skillshare is helping me make 2022 a year of learning new skills that I've never had before, and they can help you do that too. I think Skillshare is the perfect place whether you're trying to learn a new skill to improve yourself or whether you're trying to improve on a skill that you already have. The best thing about Skillshare is that it's ad-free so that you can stay focused and you won't be interrupted by noisy, annoying ads while you're trying to learn things. And they're always launching new premium classes every week so that there's always something new to learn, something new to check out. And it's really cool because their entire catalog is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. I recently just started taking this class called Document Your Life, Four Methods to Live More Intentionally by Nathaniel Drew who's also an online content creator. I have kind of been doing my own kind of monthly vlogs for the last four years of my life and I love the idea of documenting your life and I feel like this class is especially helpful because it gives even me, someone who's been doing this for a while, it gives me new ideas, it gives me different tips on things that I can do. If this class does not interest you, they have so many classes in other creative topics. Yeah, definitely be sure to check out Skillshare. Use my link down below. The first 1,000 people to use the link will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. And thank you so much once again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and now let's get into the books. So my very first one is going to be if you did not enjoy Survive the Night by Riley Sager, you're not alone. But also, I would recommend checking out the movie I'm Thinking of Ending Things. I'm Thinking of Ending Things is also based off of a book, which, you know, I would also highly encourage checking out the book too, but also the movie, because Survive the Night is very much this, like, you know, it's kind of this claustrophobic, isolated thriller kind of story where we're following these two people that are in this car for the entire, almost like the entirety of the story. And in this story, we're following this girl named Charlie, who is, you know, if we can be frank and kind of straight up, you know, she's kind of obnoxious. She's one of my least favorite protagonists that I've ever read in a book and she just genuinely kind of drives me nuts. And so we're following her in this book and she starts to think that she might be in this car with a serial killer. It's all kind of this story about how they're driving through these like snowy, you know, it's like a lot of snowy atmospheres and different things like that. And I feel like this book, the vibe of it is so similar to the I'm Thinking of Ending Things movie because in the movie, you know, and in the book, um, we get a lot of this couple who's driving through this like snowy, you know, back roads, snowy atmosphere. And it's about this guy and his girlfriend who are going to meet his parents out at his family farm. But there's something more going on in this movie, right? Because there's just, it's just so creepy. Like the atmosphere is just on point. And I just feel like if you enjoyed those vibes of Survive the Night, but you just thought the story was super cheesy and like super lame, then I would definitely check out the I'm Thinking of Ending Things movie because it has the atmosphere, but I think it nails it just a little bit better than this book does. 
I actually do think Survive the Night would probably make a really good movie, like if, if, if this was ever turned into a movie, but until then we have the I'm Thinking of Ending Things movie to satisfy us. My next recommendation is going to be if you did not enjoy The Wrong Family by Taryn Fisher. I mean, once again, you're not alone. <laughs> this was actually a book troop book club pick um, for last year and it was the only one star book I had for the book troop, so this was not enjoyable at all for me. But if you didn't like this one, but you liked the idea of it, okay, the concept of it, I highly recommend checking out the movie I See You. This is a movie that I watched like completely random one day, like I just heard about it on Letterboxd and I was like, that sounds cool and it came out in 2019. And this movie is just so bizarre, so crazy, full of twists. These are both kind of like thriller stories that have very similar things happening in these stories. And I can't explain to you what it is without getting into spoilery content. So you're just gonna have to trust me on this one. But I do think if you thought The Wrong Family had potential, because there were some potentially cool things happening in this book, it's just the ending was a disaster. The characters were like a complete shit show. Like this book was just a hot mess, you know, it was a hot mess. But if you like the idea of this and you just wanna see it in a much more interesting way, then I definitely recommend checking out I See You. I also think the movie Parasite, I mean, I know this is like a big jump, you know, because Parasite is one of the most god tier, amazing, like in my top three favorite films of all time. So I know that you're like, whoa, what? But I do think if you also like the concept in this, definitely check out Parasite because Parasite also has this concept a little bit in it as well. And it's just fascinating. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, then just watch Parasite anyways, okay? You'll thank me later. The next recommendation is going to be if you did not like The Taking of Jake Livingston, which was another one of my book troop picks from last year, what the heck, then I think you might like the movie Donnie Darko instead because I personally, when I read The Taking of Jake Livingston, I was getting major Donnie Darko vibes from this book, but I don't think it nearly lived up to how cool it could have been, at least in comparison to Donnie Darko because Donnie Darko is one of my favorite films of all time, okay? And they both have a lot of similarities in their stories, okay? Because in both stories, we're following like a teenage boy who's getting in involved in some kind of like spooky ass paranormal time travel kind of shit that he doesn't understand. There's also the talk of like astral projecting. It's talked about in both of these and I've never heard of that before either of these. There's a lot of aspects of Donnie Darko that still don't even make sense to me like to this day and I feel like that's the same situation with this book. Like there are just some things that just don't make any sense. I don't know. I just feel like if you liked the vibe of this book with like this teenage boy who's getting involved in some like time travel-y astral projecting shenanigans that he doesn't understand and it's kind of creepy and weird that I think you would really like Donnie Darko. Like Donnie Darko is freaking god tier. My next one is going to be if you did not like The Long Walk by Stephen King. I know this is a hot take, okay? I know because I know everybody loves this book. I personally didn't enjoy it very much, but I feel like if you didn't like The Long Walk, then I highly recommend checking out Squid Game on Netflix. And I know this might be a stretch, okay? Hear me out. Both of these stories involve this game, you know, that is like a deadly game. And in Squid Game, if you didn't know, I mean, everybody knows Squid Game by now, right? But if you didn't know, Squid Game, it involves childhood games that are deadly and these people they go and they risk their lives to play these deadly games to win money right like that's the whole thing and then in the long walk it's about these boys okay i believe there's like a hundred of them that sign up for this long walk which is essentially going to be this game and there's only going to be one person standing at the end and they have to basically walk to their deaths like they're just walking until they either die they get shot they like starve to death like they're just walking until the end of the line and there's only only gonna be one survivor so it's very much like squid games stakes you know what I'm saying? Because there's money involved. The person that wins the long walk wins a lot of money. I think the thing that these have in common that a lot of other game things don't have in common. I mean, this is like a mild spoiler for Squid Game. I'm talking like episode two spoiler. So it's like a little bit of a spoiler, but I think something these have in common is that th these people are choosing to do this, even though they know the stakes are deadly, you know? And that's what I think makes them so unique and so interesting. But I personally, I just wasn't a huge fan of The Long Walk because I thought this was so boring and so repetitive and just like not that great because we're just literally reading about these boys walking for the entire book. And I just wanted the stakes to feel a little bit more intense than what they felt like, at least for me. But I feel like Squid Game, it takes everything that I loved about this and just elevates it so much. And it's so interesting. And I feel too 
too, like both of these stories have really great, you know, commentary on what it's like for someone to live in poverty and how some people would rather choose to put themselves in a deadly situation like this than be forced to live in poverty for the rest of their life. And I feel like both of these have a lot of really great commentary on that. So there's a lot of really great social commentary happening in both of these as well. But I just think Squid Game worked so much better for me. The next one's going to be if you did not like Carrie by Stephen King, then I think you might like this show on Netflix called I Am Not Okay With This, which, you know, I'm so bummed because this show actually got canceled after its first season, which just makes me so angry because the show was so good and it had so much potential. And I do think this show, it might have been, you know, slightly inspired by Carrie, okay? Which is why I think this is like the perfect comparison for this because both of these stories deal with this young girl who's starting to go through puberty and starting to go through all these changes who's starting to realize she might have some kind of abilities and that's basically what these stories are about. I do think that the show is very much Carrie inspired because it does have a lot of that same kind of feel but oh my gosh I think I am not okay with this. I enjoyed even more because it's more of a feel like she might be like becoming a superhero or something like that like she doesn't know what kind of power she might have and it's just so entertaining and I also thought the actors were so cute in this show. It has the same actors from the movie It. It has the girl that plays Beverly and then one of the other kids from It are in this one and it's just, ah! This show is so good. Like, I don't know what they were thinking canceling it, but it just, it definitely reminded me of Carrie, but I personally wasn't a huge fan of Carrie. I thought this book was super boring. It's one of my least favorite Stephen King books. And so I just thought this show did everything that I wanted from Carrie. The next one I would say is if you did not like The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware, I would recommend checking out the movie Knives Out because if you're interested in the idea of like a family inheritance and like someone going and meeting the family and there's like somebody just died and there's a big inheritance to be had and that kind of thing, then I highly recommend checking out Knives Out. I know it's like Knives Out is so popular by now. It's like, have you not seen Knives Out? But the Death of Mrs. Westaway is a book that has kind of a similar premise to Knives Out and I just wanted to love it as much as I loved Knives Out but it couldn't possibly live up to that for me. But The Death of Mrs. Westaway just has a very similar premise. You know, it's about a family inheritance. There's like a big mansion vibes in this one, like rich families that she doesn't know. They just kind of have like a similar feel to them but I definitely think that Knives Out is the superior story and then the next one I would recommend is if you did not like the book Rewind by Katherine Ryan Howard, I would recommend checking out the show Bates Motel. Just for the reason that these are both kind of like thrillery things that involve motels, because in the book Rewind, we're following this woman who she's an influencer and she goes to this motel and she ends up going missing. And then it's been a minute since I've read this book, but I believe that it's the guy that's like the owner of the motels. He has these like cameras where he can watch what's going on in the rooms of the motels, which is like super creepy and major like Norman Bates vibes, okay? <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's like he sees something happen one night and I believe he sees this woman getting killed in the room and then the person who killed them like looks right into the camera and like they know that the camera's there and he's confused because nobody knows that that camera is there and they're like, what the heck? And the book just sounds super good, right? It sounds so good. Unfortunately, I thought this book was just fine. It was pretty average in my opinion. Like it just didn't have have what it just didn't give what I was wanting it to give you know and so I think if you're looking for that kind of energy like some creeper dude watching girls in motel rooms um you need to watch Bates Motel. Bates Motel is based on the movie Psycho if you didn't know we follow the character Norman Bates when he was like younger and his relationship with his mom Norma and it's one of my favorite shows of all time and it's just so it's so creepy so fun I just I love everything about this show I've actually rewatched the show it's just fantastic so I think if you're looking for that kind of energy and you didn't like Rewind, then I would definitely check out Bates Motel. All right, the next one is going to be if you didn't like the book Come With Me, then I think you might like the movie The Night House because both of these are kind of like horror vibes. I mean, the book claims to be horror, but I feel like this book is not horror at all, but it was nominated for horror at the Goodreads Choice Awards. So like, what do I know? But they're both these horror stories about this couple who like one of them they lose their spouse and then it's about how they start to find out that their spouse had like all these secrets that they never knew about you know so like in the book it's about the guy and how his wife has recently died and then he starts to find out all about this secret life that he never knew that she had and it becomes this kind of like mysterious suspenseful situation that revolves around that but I personally thought the book was so god dang slow so boring nothing happens I just wanted more from this story but I feel like if you didn't like that but you like 
like the idea of that, then you have to check out The Night House because The Night House is about this woman who her husband has recently died and then she starts to find out all of these secrets about this life that she didn't know that he had, about this person that he was that she didn't know. It's just so suspenseful. It's one of my favorite movies that I saw last year. I feel like this movie just like slipped under everyone's radar and nobody's even talking about it anymore, but this movie was so good. Oh my god, it was so eerie, it was so dark, it was so mysterious, and it just hit all of the right notes. Like, this is exactly what I was hoping Come With Me would be, but Come With Me just ended up being so slow and so boring, but The Night House, freaking fantastic, 10 out of 10. Highly recommend checking it out. And then this last recommendation that I have is for a book that I actually personally DNF'd, so I don't know how accurate this is going to be, but I feel like if you did not like the book A Flicker in the Dark, like myself, I think I DNF'd of this like 60 pages in. Um, I feel like you might enjoy the TV show Sharp Objects because these are both thrilling stories that take place in a small town and I am pretty sure, I mean don't quote me on this, but I am pretty sure that both of these stories take place in Louisiana, like around the same areas, so it definitely has that same like small town feel to both of these. And if you didn't know, the Sharp Objects TV show is actually based off of a book called Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. So there is a book comparison for this as well, but this one, it follows this woman named Chloe Davis who does live in a small town of Louisiana and six teenage girls went missing when she was younger, okay? So like, we're talking, there's a serial killer out there and now 20 years later, she's a psychologist in Baton Rouge and getting ready for her wedding. And then she starts to hear news that like a serial killer is back in her small town, but she doesn't understand because her dad was actually the one who was responsible for those other girls that died back in the day. And he's been in prison this whole time, but now there's somebody else potentially murdering girls again. And so yeah, it just has a similar vibe to Sharp Objects because you know, in Sharp Objects, we're following Amy Adams plays the the main character and she's this journalist who's going back to her small town town in Louisiana, I'm pretty sure there's a serial killer that's killing young girls. And it's kind of like a similar situation where, you know, she has this complicated family history too. However, I will warn you though, that there are a lot of trigger warnings for sharp objects. Like there are not a lot of things in this show that are easy to watch. And I would highly encourage you to check out the trigger warnings before watching the show because it is a lot. Even for me, I was like, holy crap, that's a lot. But I do think if you enjoy those like thriller kind of small town vibes where there's a serial killer that's like killing a bunch of young girls, then I think you should check out Sharp Objects instead of reading this one. You know, this was not a fun time, at least for me. Those are all of the recommendations for today. You'll have to let me know if you like this style of recommendations because I've never done a video quite like this one before where it's like, if you didn't like these books, watch this movie or TV show instead. And yeah, I do still plan to keep the other kind of videos that I do in this kind of series, if you will. I do still plan to do those. Like I do still have in the works another video that's gonna be like, if you like this book, check out this book, or if you didn't like this book, check out this book, or if you like this book, watch this movie or TV show. But I thought this would be a fun little installment, you know, of like, if you didn't like this, then watch this movie or TV show instead. And yeah, you'll have to let me know if you agree with me on any of these, or if you disagree with any of me on these, like, I mean, that's fine too. And you can also let me know of any other books, like, if you didn't like this one, then you should check out this movie or TV show instead, because I'm always looking for more recommendations like this, and I just think this is such a fun way to recommend uh, books and movies and TV shows. So yeah. Anyways, thank you so much for watching as always, and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye.